Welcome back. If you're just joining us, we are here behind the scenes on the set of upcoming Hollywood horror movie, Kane Hill, starring Damar Martin and Laura Jean Marsh. This movie is sick. It's violent and it's gruesome. And we've been granted exclusive access to the set, which is shooting right here at the real Kane Hill Asylum. Something that's made all the more terrifying by the fact that this is a true story. And the events depicted in the film happened right where I'm standing, just five years ago. for a few days. I know, but I have to work. <laughs> you always tell me how to enjoy your weekends with your mum. I promise I'll be safe. Okay. Love you too. Bye. How is she? I know I don't work here. I'm not afraid to tell me about it. I think she's a little worried about us being here. Understandable. It always amazes me how an eight-year-old can make you feel so guilty. And that, my friend, is why I don't have any kids. Freedom to do as I want. Here's me thinking it's because you haven't been in a serious relationship for at least two years. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> we should have enough batteries for the shoot. We've got the generation in the car, but the battery kit should work the night cameras. Michael the tech guy make sure it runs all right anyway. Cool. Um, do you know when we're shooting the interviews with local residents? I haven't managed to get anyone we asked to agree to be interviewed. But we'll just ask around, and if anyone's willing to be on camera, we'll start shooting. Hmm. Let them have all the paperwork. Good, um, I'll keep the camera on and get some cool shots of the town. Also, it'll be good to get a shot of the building looming over the town as well. Yeah, cool. Yeah? Sounds good. Good. That's the whole point of doing it. Yeah, I understand that, but now I'm on location, so I'm going to have to call you back anyway when I get back. You all right? Cheers. Problem? Uh, just post-production. The guy we've got to do the offline edit, he's been offered more money elsewhere, so he's pulled out. Shit. Well, how soon can you be replaced? I think it'll be a few days. I'll sort it out. You folks on this, yeah. Um, Steve, this is Rob Runner. This is Richard, your director. Good to meet you, Steve. And this, well, this is. Sorry, did, did we invite him or did did he break in? This is what. Uh, this is this is Marcus. He's our camera op. It's all right, you'll be fine. You want to know anything? Just ask. Cool. So we sorted. Ready to go? Yep. Cool. Yeah. Let's get hustle on names. We've got to go and meet Mike and Merritt Hive Silly, yeah? Cool, cool, let's go. Okay, Steve, can you help these guys load anything you need to into the van? Sure, we'll do. Got a good feeling about this one, Rich. Me too. Good script, good location, good people. <laughs> what more could you want? Bigger budget? Always, in independent filmmaking, people want bigger budgets. But if you want it, you can always sell a kidney. <laughs> Great. No, no kidneys.
Oh, that is great news. Thank you, Vicky. Good news? Yeah, good news. She's found another editor for us. Oh, brilliant. And the best bit is, it's less than the last guy because she managed to persuade him through a contact that it's a great opportunity. <laughs> now that is a relief. Mm. So now our only problem is sticking the schedule. So where is Steve? This is Richard, our director. Richard, this is Mary, our researcher. Good to meet you, Richard. Nice to meet you too, Mary. So you're our expert on Cane Hill? Well, I wouldn't say expert, but uh, I've done my research and I know enough. <laughs> Perfect gift for you, though. Yeah, well, I've been wanting to check the place out for a while. I hear some of the stories are a bit intense. Mm -hmm. Intense is one word for them. <laughs> well, thanks for being a part of this. Thanks for having me. OK, then. Pee let's gather round. Okay, welcome to the first day of production. This is Mary, she's our research expert. She knows everything there is to know about Kangen, but specifically about ex-inmate Chester Lockhart. Now, our plan of action day, Rich, I'm gonna need you to take Marcus and Mary into town, speak to locals, get as much B-cam footage as you can, yeah? Yeah, no worries. Okay, and I'm gonna go with Michael and Steve. We're gonna get things prepped. You know where we're meeting, yeah? Uh, I know it's on the course sheet. I'm not too confident about the area, to be honest. No worries, I'm gonna swing around the hotel, I'll grab you there, yeah? Now, most importantly today, guys, is safety. We are going to an old abandoned building. It is going to be derelict and run down, so just be careful, please. You actually care? About you? About production insurance, yes. <laughs> Rick, have you got anything you want to say? Yeah, sure. Um, guys, thank you so much for being here. It's going to be a long weekend, but an enjoyable one, I hope. Uh, so let's be smart, be safe, and uh, get some breakfast. Okay. All right. Let's keep going, guys. Let's go. Nice, guys. Come on, guys. Are we rolling, Marcus? Okay, great, here we go. So, could you start by giving us your name? I, uh, I, I'd really rather not, if that's... Okay, but you own the local butchers here in the town, right? I do, yes. And you claim to have seen Chester Lockhart? Claim, well, a lot of people claim, but people around here are afraid of what goes on up there, and we don't like to talk about it much. I appreciate that, but if there's anything at all you can tell us. I can tell you he's broken into my place numerous times, and it's Lockhart, I'm sure of it. What was stolen? Money? Money? No. Meat. Lots of meat. Every time, but... Rules, you know. Man's got to eat. Okay, 
But what makes you think it was Chester Lockhart? Have you ever seen him? Well, we installed a lot of these newfangled CTV cameras and I put them in, he smashed them all up. And then the next time I put them in, he smashed them again. What made you think it was him, though? People just didn't want to talk about it. To be honest with everything that's happened here, I'm not really surprised. People are probably sick and tired of talking about the place. Doesn't it help us to open a documentary? Look, we'll just head back to the hotel, get ourselves sorted of tomorrow, and we'll catch some great footage after the asylum. That's my dream team. What's up? How'd it go? Not great. People are sick of talking about the place, I think. No, don't worry about it. That's where the real story is. Did you get the release forms for the interview? Dead. Not many, but I got them. All right, let's go to the hotel, grab some grub then, yeah? Cool. I love this guy. I've been working with him for years now. <laughs> we certainly have. <laughs> My work wouldn't be half as good without this guy oh, directing me. Stop it, you're gonna make me blush. <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. <laughs> well, I've only known you for a couple of hours. <laughs> Probably best reserve judgment to last the weekend then. <laughs> and by the end of filming, you'll agree with me, I know it. I tell you, isn't he nice when he's drunk? <laughs> Get a couple of beers inside, he's a proper little sweetheart, isn't he? <laughs> so how do you know so much about Kane Hill from? Yeah, I wanted to ask that. Well, I was always kind of interested in the stories, being urban legends and all that. Um, and then a couple of years ago, I decided I wanted to know a bit more about my parents. I um, was adopted. Oh. <laughs> and you don't have to get out the miniature violins. I found out there was something to do with Cane Hill. Really? Yeah, so I wanted to find out a bit more about that, you know? Did you ever find out the connection, or...? No, um, it was something to do with investigating the practices at Cane Hill, uh, but I just kind of became fascinated with the stories, really. Wow. Should have made her the star of the documentary. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's nice to have someone who knows about the place. Come in, guys. Michael's not coming. Got distracted by a kebab shop on the way. So, here's to a great shoot. I'm hoping he's not eating our supplies. Cheers. Cheers. So how long have you guys been making films then? Uh, I met Leonard on my first shoot actually. Uh, I was an assistant camera op and we got on really well. We all wanted to make more work so we did. That's amazing. Yeah. Do you ever find it hard? What, doing this job? Yeah, I mean it's not easy not knowing where your next paycheck's coming from. True, but I'd rather that than pick up a paycheck at a job I hate. I still do, part time at a department store. <laughs> mm, I don't envy you. <laughs> I used to work in a... DIY shop actually, with a bunch of complete idiots. Met a great girl there though. Lucky girl. <laughs> anyway, I'm hoping that this project will be a chance to change all that. Have you always wanted to work in documentaries? No, but I thought I'd try a different angle and I did a few short ones before this. It's great to have you on board. So, is there someone waiting for you at home? It's complicated. <laughs> What's complicated about it? Get straight to it, don't you? Life's too sure not to. <laughs> um, I was with this guy and he cheated. Uh, I broke it off. We spent a few months apart and then we had a drunk night together. Mm. And now he's trying to make a go of things again. Can't shake him. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I'd do in your situation? What's that? Move house and have someone tell him I died. Dark? Yeah, I mean, in my experience, if something's complicated, you need to make it less complicated by moving on. Easier said than done. Mm. What about yourself? You got someone waiting at home for you? Best girl in the world. I don't get to see her as much as I like, though. She uh, lives with her mum. Her mum? My daughter. <laughs> mum and I didn't work out, but oh, she's just the best little girl in the world. Oh, she's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I don't know how guys like you do it. 
You clearly you haven't had enough to drink then. <laughs> I'm gonna have a smoke and then I'll uh, I'll get some more drinks from it. Sure. Things. Mm. Yeah, not bad. How are you feeling about the shoot? I think we're going to get some really good stuff this weekend. 100%. You've seen the pictures from the locations, can't you? Well, in real life, it's even better than that. It's going to blow your creative little <laughs> mind. Marcus, you excited about the shoot, yeah? Yeah. You okay? Just a bit nervous about going up there. Why? I'm just. I've got this uneasy feeling, the old buildings creep me out. Understandable. This one needs to be full of loonies. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it, mate, the whole team's gonna be there. What if something happens? Like what? I don't know, something. What? Leonard's got it all sorted, he's scouted the place out. <laughs> and if anything happens, we'll just leave. Well, oh, unless it costs us money. <laughs> <laughs> got, a, got a light? Uh, yeah, sure. Couldn't help but over here, you're in there. Filming, are you? Oh, right, uh, yeah, we're shooting a documentary. Yeah, nothing nothing expensive, just you know, cheap kit. Nothing he can steal. Let me guess, you're here investigating Cane Hill? Yeah. Hmm. Thought so. Not that anyone wants to tell us anything about it. Why don't you blame them? Month after month, some fanatic comes through this town asking the same questions. My dad worked there as a janitor. Really? For years. He used to come home and tell us all the stories he'd heard about the place. He saw everything. Everything? Everything. Back in 76, Annie and George Lockhart were admitted to Cane Hill. Well, they're the couple that kidnapped and murdered all those teenagers, right? That's them. Claim that they were doing God's work, that they were cleansing the world of evil. Nutters. When they admitted Annie, she was pregnant. And because of her mental state, the Institute thought it best that she have the baby inside the... inside the asylum. On November 16th, 1977, she gave birth to Chester Lockhart. Not long after Chester was born, George Lockhart killed himself. He slit his throat with a shard of glass. Did Chester remain at Cane Hill? Mm. He did. Only one day he span out and went mad and started a massive fire that killed half the inmates and loads of the staff. <laughs> so what happened to him? Who knows? Some say he died in the fire. Some say he's in there now, roaming the halls. People think he's the one behind the disappearances. Who knows? It's just a story and not an else, right? Wouldn't be a cool place if it didn't have a neat story, right? We'll get up there tomorrow. Well, in the next few days. Nickel's worth a free advice for you. Stay well away from that place. See ya! <laughs> <laughs> What a nut! <laughs> if this was a horror movie, he'd be the guy that shows up at the end as a killer. <laughs> yeah, I don't trust him though. I'm gonna make sure he's not stealing from my van. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> Mary seems nice. Yeah, she does. Mm, and you two seem to be getting on pretty well. Yeah, she's easy to talk to, I guess. Uh, so nothing to do with the fact that she's fit as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. No, it's totally platonic. Plus, I'm a professional. Mm -hmm. I can keep it in my pants. <laughs> Until after the shoot. Well, then it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I don't know. She's a nice girl, but... I, mean, I think there's some sort of complicated situation going on at home. Uh, and then you're just going to waltz in there and complicate it even <laughs> further. <laughs> 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 Which, mate, I need a drink. Yeah, I'll be in the bed. <laughs>
So there have been all these murders and, and people going missing at this place for years, but nobody's ever been caught. I mean, it's not convenient, don't you think? Well, I don't make up the stories. I just... I followed them and they're all pretty similar. Yeah, a bit like all the people who claim to have seen a Loch Ness Monster. Yeah, but what about all the murders? You can't deny those, and there's dozens of them. Well, this place is half burned down and derelict. I mean, isn't it just possible that people hurt themselves being there? There are some survivors. I mean, not many. But they all say the same thing. They were attacked by a giant man with a baseball bat with nails in it wrapped in barbed wire. And does anybody have any idea why? I don't know. But he's never attacked anyone outside of the building. So maybe he's just this guy who's protecting his home. Is that really that hard to believe? Yeah, protect his home makes sense. But, you know, doing it in a leather mask with a lethal weapon <laughs> doesn't. Well, that's why we're here, to make sense of it all. Close, but we are here to make a documentary about an empty old building and make it seem exciting. Live a sneaky feeling that this Chester guy is conveniently not going to show up because I think it's a load of drug hallucinated crap. If any of us believed it, none of us would be here. But I do think it's a historically interesting place and I think with my family's connections to the place it's going to be really interesting to work there for the weekend. Yeah, I agree. Well, no, actually, I think it's going to be a, a long and boring weekend. So I think we are going to need to think of ways of entertaining ourselves when we're not filming. So, I mean, how do you fancy a bit of strip poker? I've never played strip poker. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't buy that. <laughs> How can you never play strip poker? What kind of girl do you take me for? You really think that I'm going to take off my clothes just for a game? A bet, maybe. But not just a game. Well, that's a shame. <laughs> and why is that? Because I've never really been into betting, but... I guess now it's going to have to change. Well, it's a shame that you're sharing a separate room with someone else. And then for the next few days, we're going to be staying in an abandoned asylum. But otherwise, I would take you up on the bed. Well, maybe we should uh, go upstairs and have a preview at least, you know, see where it goes. Easy, Tiger. And what about Marcus? Hmm. Uh, Marcus is shutting out that girl he's had his eye on. You know, honestly, if, if Marcus has his usual way, it'll be the, uh, the bar toilets or her car that gets it, not our room. I'm not sure that I know you that well. Then we really should get to know each other a little bit better. As your director, I insist. As my director, huh? Huh. For the weekend, at least. Wait. Stop. What's the matter? It's not right. <laughs> what do you mean? I have a boyfriend. The ex you can't shake? Well, it's beside the point. I'm not that kind of girl, and it's not right. Okay, uh, Mary, I just... I thought we were getting on really well. And we still will, but... Just once I've told him that it's completely over, and if you're still interested then, then maybe we can go on a date. But until then, I may be drunk, but I still have my integrity. Mary, I was never suggesting that... Richard, I'm going to go to bed. We have an early start. I will see you in the morning, OK? Do you guys want anything more to drink? It's uh, last orders in a minute. No, I'm OK, thank you. I'm going to go to bed. Are you sure we're OK? Yeah, of course we are. Yeah, I just... Yeah, I'll see you in the morning. OK. Mm.
Marcus. Marcus. Marcus, it's important. What's that, Rich? I really need to talk about Mary. Oh, well, we're gonna have to wait a minute. I am in there with that girl over there. I really need to chat, mate. Oh, man, but she is fit. <sighs> See what you're gonna do now? Shit. Go on then, this better be good. Hmm. I have mean, a few more drinks first. Hmm? Well, he's tidy. He probably had enough, haven't he? You know what you're like when you had a few too many? <laughs> no way. You just ruined my chance with that feisty lady. Now, I need some more alcohol and you'll buy it. Trust me, I'll be fine. Come on, let's go. Too many last night, and so look alive, guys. We're here. be the owner of Cane Hill. I'm Leonard Kinster, the producer. Mr. Kinster, I'm here on behalf of the owners. I'm Elizabeth Barrett, the key master of Cane Hill. Question, do you know the gatekeeper? Yeah, or Zool. <laughs> Shall we? Please. <clears throat> this is the entrance hallway, one of the only public places in the building, so it's been well maintained. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said about the rest. This place is amazing. Pretty impressive, huh? It's even better than the photos. It's giving me chills there. The second and third floors have encountered a lot of damage over the years since it shut 40 years ago. In fact, the fires left parts of it being declared highly unsafe. Hence our reluctance to let you film here. The main issue we have is with the security of the building. And that's the point. Mr. Kinster, your safety and your well-being is your own responsibility. That was made very clear from the outset. Should anything happen during your time here, our concern is limited only with the security of the building. A building which is very old and one that holds great significant value to the owners. You and your colleagues are only here by their gracious goodwill. And should anything happen during your stay, damages will be chargeable. And you will be held completely responsible. Just making a joke. See. that the owners wanted me to express. I take it there won't be any problems? No, not a problem. Thank you very much for your time, Miss Barrett. And, yeah, thanks for showing us around. Quite. Here's your keys. Word of advice. Keep the doors locked. At all times. Uh, thanks. There is no dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Only 
Always fool. It's going to take a few trips to get this kit inside. No worries, I've set aside the rest of the day for setup. Do you need a hand? Yeah, that'd be great, thank you. Uh, Marcus, do you mind grabbing some exterior shots while we're unloading, just so we can see the difference in the bed during the day? Yep, no problem. Oh, thank you. Steve, you good? You got everything you need? Uh, yeah, I'm good, thanks. Michael, do you want to come in with us, or do you want us to come back down to you? I'm in no rush to go back inside there, believe me. Kitten, let's decide what room to move it, yep. There we go. Okay. Hey, where's best for you? Well, we can't do much until Mike gets the cameras up and running. Um, where are you thinking for a base? Well, that's actually the biggest room, and we're right here, so we might as well just move in there. No point moving it all. Cool. I'm just going to see if there's a room through here. Can you hear anything? Nah, I just need to find a nice quiet room and I'll be good to go. Cool. This room's great. What's with all the monitors? Uh, this is obviously where they used to run the building security from. I think we can hook up our cameras to these monitors, but the real interesting thing I think this used to be the safe room for the staff. Check out the door. Does that lock from the inside? Yeah. Play and lock yourself in here all weekend, Mike. That's a very good idea, Richard. I think I might. <laughs> so, what are you guys actually doing? Well, Richard wants everything monitored while we're here, so we're going to set up a network of these little things. So no matter what happens, day or night, we can capture on camera. Have you decided where you want to put them yet? Uh, yeah, main stairwell. Hallways, main hall, and a few additional rooms. So according to the research, the second floor was reserved for the less violent patients, with the top floor serving as the home for the more exciting patients, right? Yeah, so each floor ran individually. Staff were allocated a floor and a set amount of patients each. Do we know where Chester stayed? Third floor. So I want to get the camera set up there first. I don't want to miss a thing. So wait, do we actually have a plan? You know? If we see him. Seriously? <laughs> we're documentary filmmakers, we're not Ghostbusters. I wouldn't risk myself or any of the team if I actually thought there was any substance in this bullshit. Look, our job is to make things seem interesting, even if they may not be. <laughs> oh, so this is where the party is. Okay, all the equipment is in and so is the kit, and the doors are now locked. We have checked in to Hotel Cane Hill. Boss, did we get bed and breakfast? Mm, sleeping bag sugar puffs and Steve service in you, but <laughs> okay, you are gonna need those to put your cameras out. I will need them back to me once you're done. Cool, I'm gonna get some pickup shots and take a look around. Sure thing. So uh pretty good at all this techie stuff, huh? That's pretty good. I love it. We'll see how you feel in a decade or two. Look, can you find the mains power for this place? I need to charge up these batteries, and we haven't got lights or power. We were told that there would be some, so I'm figuring it's just the breakers. Oh, oh okay. Um, any ideas? I'd imagine it's in the basement. Take a torch. Right. Yeah, no, sure. I can do that.
Nice. Genius. Hello? As you can see, Annie was an expensive inmate. Uh, she requested haircuts every week, and new clothes all the time. <sighs> Murdering all those teenagers in Krampus style. <laughs> Whoa, what's the matter? Richard, I was, I was, I was looking around. Okay, breathe, and what happened? I went upstairs to take a look around, and then I... I heard this sound. Jesus, did, did you hurt yourself? No, I'm fine. She heard a sound, and then what? Well, nothing. I, I freaked out and I came back down here. Oh, you freaked out when you heard the sound? It wasn't just any sound. Well, you're safe now, that's what matters. I, I don't think we should stay here, Rich. We've only really just got here. Everyone's a bit on edge. Or we could just play a fun game called Jane. Man, if I can. <laughs> Go on. Maybe we should just sit down for a minute. Mary, do you mind grabbing him a bottle of water? Sure. Recharge, have a drink, take a breather. We need to get the cameras up running as soon as possible. Man, they're gonna be hours until they're ready yet. You're not buying into this, are you? I trust him. I don't want taking chances. Fine, yeah, cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh. 
Ah, uh, dead, bloody badger, Mike. It took ten minutes to get out of my shoe. It fucking stank. And we're in business. Bloody hell, how many cameras do we have up? There's 32 of them all together. And they're all recording at the same time? Yeah. They all feed back to the master recorder. They record everything 24-7. That's where we can review it all afterwards and decide what we need. 32 cameras. It's a bit excessive, don't you think? Right, it is a lot, but we've got a TV show to make. Plus, it's going to make me feel a lot better sleeping here for the next few nights, knowing that we've got a camera on everything. Mm. You know, just in case. That's it. And slowly pull focus on the end of the corridor. That's it. Beautiful, lovely shots. What are they? And cut there, please. I want to intercut these location shots with the uh, green screen stuff we're going to shoot with the actor in a few weeks' time. That's fine with me, it's looking good. Um, the actor, they should be sorted in the next couple of weeks. Negotiations with the agents, you know, taking a bit longer, but yeah, should be sorted. Cool. Well, let's worry about getting the location stuff sorted first. I want to keep the pace up. Yeah, that's true. Just in case Chester makes another appearance. <laughs> Fuck the ball. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it was exactly this sort of luxury I had in mind when I was paying my way through university. Yeah, I was led to believe there would be luxury bedding provided. <laughs> <laughs> well, you bollocks, if you wanted luxury, you should have packed it like me. What the fuck? Bastard. I knew you'd do something like this. Leonard. Please, boss, best boss. I'm a girl, you're not going to let me sleep on the cold, hard floor, are you? Oh, equal right to sleep wherever you want, just not on my bed. Cold, boss. No, you're right. on this cold floor. I wouldn't be able to work now, would I? Well, you could sleep in the van. Floor it is, then. Is Michael coming down? Steve! Yeah? Mike, is he coming down? Uh, yeah, he was just finishing something. He'll be down when it's done. Yeah, I just think it'll be better if we're all sleeping together. Bye. 
Mike. Michael! Come on, mate. Leonard's got us bacon. What is it? No, he's got a cereal and, from the taste of it, month-old milk. Mike, when did you stop working? Uh, about two hours ago. Let's go and get some of that cereal. Morning all. This is our first full day in the asylum, yeah? So, we're going to have to make the most of it. I'm probably going to spend a lot of time with Richard and Marcus. But Mary is here if you need any guidance, any kind of insight. And Steve, I'm just going to need you back and full full doing, mate. All day. Make sure everyone's got what they need. Yeah? Sure. Okay, guys, first thing today, I want to do the dining room. I want to get some coverage of the plate for the FX, guys. All right? Let's go. What's the matter? Alright, I thought I saw someone. But I had my glasses off at the time, so for all I know it could have just been a curtain. Don't tell me that shit, man. This place freaks me out enough as it is. Right, that's the radio's on charge. Go and get Leonard and Richard. Wait, what? Just, just go! Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, well, I slept pretty well last night. Not as good as Leonard did, I'm sure. Don't be bitter because you didn't think ahead. Rich, Leonard, Mike needs you now. What for? He didn't say, but he needs you. Now, come on. What's wrong? What the hell is that? I haven't got a clue. Well, what's on the cameras? Nothing, but we can't have cameras everywhere. The microphones pick up a lot. What more. the hell is that? I don't have a clue. Chester? Uh, it could just be kids trespassing. Have we got cameras in all the places we wanted? Yes. You got cameras upstairs too? Yeah, I've got a couple up there for you. But did you see any? No, nothing while I was working. Well, just do us a favour and keep an eye on things, we. Yeah, I'm going to be here all night. Yeah, well, you make sure Steve gives you a break. Yeah, right. Steve, did you get those radios to us? Yeah, they should be good to go now. OK, Rich, you take one and I'll take one. And, Mike, you keep some here for you, yeah? Are you sure everything's set up and online? We have eyes all over the place. If anything happens, we'll see it. If anybody turns up, we will see them. OK, if you see anything, you radio us. No problem. Do you really think it was Chester that we heard? Maybe. What if he's watching us right now? Watching everything we're doing? We have the cameras set up. We're all here together. I'm sure we'll see him before he sees us. This is one of those times I have to question my career trip. Steve. Yeah? One for you. I'll call you on that if I need you, yeah? Channel two, yeah? Cheers. Hey, boss, um... Don't mind if I go for a quick bag, do you? Uh, I've given the keys to Mike. If you keep it on and you're quick, yeah, just jump in one next room, chair. Cheers.
every time I go to eat something, something happens. worried about her dad, it's not your fault. Mike came here because of me. No, he came here because he wanted to. What's important now is if we all get out of here alive. This place is a labyrinth. Kenny? This is safe. This is what it's designed for. 
Danny. He was just a kid. Oh, shit. We'd get out there right now. Where are they? I don't know. I don't see him. Wait, there they are. Is that Steve? He's killed him. Oh, my God. What the fuck is going on? We're all going to die. No. No, we're getting out of here alive. How? That fucking lunatic has the keys and he knows this place inside out and we're just sitting here. I don't know, but we will find a way. Chester! Richard Leonard, it's Mary. It's Chester, he's the one behind this and he's got the keys. What? Say again. He's got the keys and he's headed straight for you. This isn't good. What? Find a weapon. That big bastard's coming. We need to get a weapon. We need to be ready to fight. I don't much of a match for that guy. Find a goddamn weapon. Look, what if you're doing, do it fast. He's coming straight for you. Find someone alive. We need to get a jump on him. Chester, but he's gonna 
<laughs> find out pretty soon. Okay, stay there. We're coming to get you. Hurry. <laughs> What do we do? I don't know, let me think. One of us has to distract Chester while the other one gets Richard. Why can't we just stay together? Because that room is a dead end. We both go in there and we're trapped. Mm. One of us needs to make sure that he doesn't get there. No, it's suicide. There's no other way. I don't know. Look, if you've got a better idea than I'm all is. All right, I'll distract him, you get Richard. No, I'll distract him, you get Richard. No way, I'll do it. It's my idea. I'm pretty fast and I think I can outrun him. Okay, if you're sure. Just go get Richard and meet us back in the main hall. And you? I'll meet you there. And if you don't? Just make sure you get out. Then we're gonna get you out of here, yeah? Well, where's Mary? She's looking for Chester. What? Why? That doesn't matter right now. What matters is that we get you out of here. <coughs> just, just, just give me a minute. So listen, I don't know how many doors we have. We need to get moving now. Okay, just, just, just can you grab me that piece of wood? <coughs> what? Fritz! <coughs>
can't run! Oh, help! We can't get down the stairs! <laughs> Chester. Same. We need to get out of here. Come on. Go now. <laughs> The girl that survived said that one guy murdered all of them. Why? She doesn't know. Did she say what he looked like? Uh, yep. Tall, male, beard, face mask. Had with him a bat with nails in it. Oh, not Lockhart. Would sound like it. Sounds like bullshit. She seems legit. She was part of a documentary film crew. Did they film anything that could be used as evidence? Doesn't seem like it. The tech crew had a quick look. So far, nothing but static. Static? Yep. Static. Oh, they can't be that good at filmmaking if they only manage to film static. Any sign of him or anything you guys might find? Nope. Not a trace. It's like a fucking spectre. Same description every time, never a fucking trace. That guy looks really messed up. Yeah, he's the only other survivor. They think he'll make it. How much was there? I'm sorry? Footage. How much was there? Approximately 18 hours, the tech guy said. 18 hours of static.
Yeah. 